Hello everyone, welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. And so breaking news, World Rugby have officially announced the approval of a bunch of brand new laws which will take effect in the 1st of July. And the anti-springbok rule, as some people are even beginning to call it, has officially been approved with uh, the laws to suggest far less scrummaging and far less set pieces actually in general. And this is already creating quite an uproar, and rightly so, to be honest, because I think while some of the laws... And some of the law innovations are quite good. Some of them are really, really poor. And I think, you know, going to sort of set rugby on a course, which is a very slippery slope towards it becoming less rugby union, more rugby league, and, and less like the game that we all love, watch, and uh, want to protect. But before we get into law changes, please do smash like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. So we mentioned the fact that this was going to be going, uh, th th these laws were going to be put towards the World Rugby Council in May, and we are now here in May, and it has officially been approved, which means that whilst there is the phase action rollout, certain things will come into effect as soon as the 1st of July. And apparently, and this is where, you know, you got to love the, the rhetoric, it is fan-orientated changes, apparently. All of these are towards promoting a better spectacle for the fan, you know, and for them, apparently, the only spectacle that is worth watching is a quick spectacle. That is basically... The only thing World Rugby have, uh, have prioritized is quick ball and ball and play and attack. And it's taken away the little bit, of, you know, the little small, you know, complexities of rugby, which for me make it so good. You know, the lineups, the scrums, the, the rucks, the malls. You know, it's those different elements which make rugby such a multifaceted game. And why, and why we watch a rugby union as opposed to a rugby league, um, you know, which is far less about that. So let's go through the law, shall we? So in terms of the three laws that have been approved and will come into effect, on the 1st of July. The first is, as it was known, as the DuPont law being removed, which is being onside from kicks in open play. Previously, it was possible for players to be put on onside from a kick in open play should the player uh, catch the ball and um, run five meters or pass the ball. However, this has since been changed and it says that the offside player will have to retreat and um, and uh, we'll, we'll basically have to, uh, you know, that where, where they used to have to stand, they will not have to retreat and be put on side. So it has been clarified um, um, that, that they'll have to be put on side and they can't just sort of wait, wait for the player to run five meters and then all of a sudden they're on side, they can go and make the tackle. Um, so it, it says, and I quote, this should reduce the amount of kick tennis in the game. The second law is free kicks, and this is the big one, isn't it? Uh, under law 20.3, it will no longer be possible to choose a scrum from a free kick. Free kicks must either be tapped or kicked to encourage more ball in flow. Absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense, this. And, you know, this is where people are sort of saying, well, is this the anti-Springbok law? Because the Springboks have got the best scrum in the world. And uh, basically what it means, and what the, it's not so much just the law, it's about how it's going to be implemented. Because now what teams can do is they can concede a free kick and the opposition cannot use the scrum. They have to either quick tap or, uh, or kick it in touch with it. They don't even get the lineup. So the only option they really get is a quick tap, uh, which means that, for example, you could be on the five meter line looking to try and scrum the opposition over, and they they know that, for example, maybe they, they can't match your scrum, and they don't take the hit, for example, and they opt to try and to concede a free kick, and all of a sudden the attacking team has to, you know, go to base to to a tap to 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 a quick tap. Similarly, you know, if if they're looking for a free exit inside their own half, once again the opposition can sort of just say, well, we'll just concede a free kick, and then you're either, you're either kick downfield to us, you kick out and we get the ball, or you tap and go inside your own 22 with you know, very little opportunity to, to you know, progress downfield. Now, what is supposedly going to counter that is that you know, they're going to have to be a lot stricter about scrum penalties, and if teams don't take the hit, for example, or teams deliberately try to concede a free kick, that they get penalized, straight on penal penalty. Um, but we all know that the scrums are currently already, at the moment, refereed very... Um, I wouldn't say dodgily, but, uh, but, 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 but it's difficult to, to, uh, to, to referee the scrum. So, you know, this removes such a big element. It removes the scrum as an attacking option. You know, Damien Vilimsa, this is pretty much why this law has been you know, brought to the fore. When he did mark the ball, uh, which is a free kick, and then called for a scrum against France, you know, a few months later, all of a sudden it's being removed. And uh, you look at, for example, the, the moment where, the, you know, the, the box had that scrum against England, for example, and, and won the penalty, you know, that for example, would not, might not be the case. So it's going to remove so many different aspects of, of, of the game. And I think it's an absolute disaster uh, waiting to happen. I do think this is going to, be going to be rolled back, hopefully because there's a lot of opposition, but realistically, because I think there's a lot of issues in the implementation and, and the actual, um, the what, what's actually going to happen 
when this gets implemented. Uh, the final law, tra- uh, law that will be introduced is banning the crocodile roll, which you know, should have been done a long time ago, which the action of rolling, twisting, pulling of a player on their feet in the tackle will be outlawed, sanctioned by a penalty. So you cannot grab a player and twist them over, go over, bring them over um, because of the uh, the injuries that it does cause. So that was a good one. We all know that. That's been like, it's basically been um, something on the cards for a while now. They just basically formalized it. Um, there are then closed law trials, which will debut at World Derby competitions, including the World Under 20 Championships, some of them are already happening, the Under 20 Trophy, and the Pacific Nations Cup. Uh, these will include a revised on and off field sanctions process, which increases the simplicity, consistency, and fan understanding. This features the combination of strong automatic off field red card sanctions. Um, you know, basically just means, you know, if it's a, if it's foul play, it's two weeks. If it's aggravated foul play, it's four weeks. That's the, you know, the, the strong automatic off field san- red card sanctions that they mentioned. And the ability to replace a player, a red card player after 20 minutes. So it's the 20 minute red card. I hate the 20 minute red card. I think red cards are there for a reason. They're there to stop. Foul play. They're there to stop the ugliness. Uh, you know, they're there to stop incidents we don't want to see in rugby. And I think that without a red card, you know, the jeopardy goes away. Yes, players can get banned. Yes, that player can't come back on the field. But this whole thing of the spectacle is ruined. That's the point. The point is a act that is really dangerous, really poor by a player has put their team down. It is a team game. This whole thing of why must the team suffer from the individual? Because it's a literal team game. You know, you miss a tackle, you can see the try. The team is suffering from the individual. An individual creates an amazing, you know, solo try. He's benefited and the team's benefited. It is not an individual game. So this whole thing of why should one person's action ruin the team? Because that's what a team game is. You know, and why do we promote that concept in every single other aspect of it, except when it comes to a red card? You get a red card, you go off the field, your team suffers. And that's for me how it should be. Uh, I don't think the 30 second red card, the, the, the 20 minute red card works with good super rugby. Discipline is, is as bad as ever, and they've had a 20 minute red card for a while. So, very strongly against that one. Uh, the introduction of a 30 second sh- uh, shot clock for scrums, a line setting, and a maximum se- uh, of 60 seconds for conversions. It used to be 90. Um, so, I don't mind that too much. I mean, that, that's for me a reasonable way that we could speed up the game. You know, don't remove the scrums, just make sure they set a little bit quicker. But now you're removing scrums and making sure that the scrums, the few scrums we do have, will be done quicker. Uh, the protection of the nine at the base of the scrum rack and at the mall. Um, this is following trials in Major League Rugby and uh, as well as community competitions in New Zealand. Uh, you will not be able to play the nine whilst they are uh, near the tackle rack or mall, as well as not being able to go past sort of the center part of the tunnel of the scrum when it comes to scrum time, which means that the number nines can get a clean ball. Yeah, I wrote an arbitrary one. I think, you know, I think I like the risk that people take sometimes of trying to play the nine and sometimes going offside and doing a conceding penalty, high risk, high reward. You know, so I think that kind of removes that a little bit. Um, the ability to mark the ball inside the 22 meter line from restart. We've seen this in the 20 rugby championship. If you go long into the 22, the team can call it mark, can't call a scrum anymore, but um, can have a free kick to touch, for example, or can tap and go. Uh, I think it's a bit arbitrary. I think I don't think it was really a need for this. I think this is, you know, creating something for the sake of creating something. The idea is to try and promote more contestable kickoffs, you know, to go between the 10 meter and the 22 and to try and sort of get into that space and try and compete for the ball. I think it's pretty arbitrary, to be honest. Uh, the more must be played after the more stop once, not twice. I mean, I suppose that does uh, speed up play, but again, it removes the more as an attacking option. You know, they really, I mean, so you know, no more scrums, no more malls. You start to wonder as a prop, do you have a future in the game? And that's kind of the, the issue, isn't it? Uh, and then the only one I really like is ball is play on at the lineup if the ball is not thrown straight, uh, but only if it is un- uncontested. So hooker goes, throws it to his man. The other team doesn't go up. It's slightly skewed. That's play on. And I think that's logical. Again, it should have been done a long time ago. Uh, these Then there are specialist working groups established for future innovations. And this is where a lot of circuits are also getting very upset. Uh, first of all, there's a massive review of the tackle rack breakdown, the idea of jackling, the safety, for example, and how that might happen. Uh, there's big reviews on the TMO protocol, which I think is a good thing. This is the big one, though, number of replacements. So they're going to examine the latest research on the impact of fatigue and the number and timing of replacements in the elite game to determine options that might create more space on the field while improving injury rates. Basically, the removal of the bomb squad and the potential 7-1 split, for example. So... You know, once again, something that SAP has used down to a T1 World Cup because of it, and it almost seems it's a bit of a knee-jerk reaction to sit there saying, because now there's this whole rhetoric, well, you know, it's not fair because now you've got these big players running into tired players. It was never an issue. 
you know, you bring on a a a Jerome Kano off the bench after six after sixty five minutes, and he runs into a number nine or a wing, for example. That's never been an issue over the years. But South Africa now packing their bench with forwards, which is a high risk, high reward strategy, by the way. Um, that's all of a sudden where all of a sudden it's become unsafe. And I'd be interested to see the research on that, but that does seem pretty pointed as well. A fan experience. Grow Rugby's audience share via fan-focused view of how the game is marketed. A consistent approach to the presentation. Bloody, 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 bloody. Guys, it's not hard. You know, people want to watch rugby. People want to consume rugby. But you've got to get the product right. You've got to get the laws right. You've got to get the distribution right. You know, make it more available for people. Um, stop making it so elitist. Get more players into the four. You know, you've got to expand the fact, you know, even the idea of tier one, two tier nations, that needs to be removed. You can't, you just have to have rugby nations. Why must we have a tier one, tier two nations? You know, we've got to grow this game into more into more countries. And until you start looking at this elitist, con you know, few, and everything happens between them, you're never going to grow the game. And then the elite tackle high, carefully consider the results of the community tackle high trials across 11 nat national unions globally and consider the appropriate battery, that's the that's the the chest high tackle, which has been used in, in Varsity Cup, and I'm not massively opposed to it to be honest. I think it's I think it could be a very interesting innovation, and uh, we've seen how, for example, the Peter Steph Toy got it so right in that final. So those are the various changes. What do you think? A lot to digest. I want to know what your comments are down in the comments below. Please do smash like on the video and subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.